Hey, it's Spencer from Heavy Consequence of Consequence of Sound. We're talking to the new band Suspect 208. We have with us today bassist Tai Trujillo, drummer London Hudson, and guitarist Nico Sangaris. And joining us soon will be singer Noah Weiland. And we reported on this band recently, and they released their debut single, Long Awaited. And it absolutely blew up uh, on our website and our socials. And uh, really happy to have you guys here. And before we start talking about the song, I wanted to know how you guys formed, because as I understand it, you're a relatively new band. So uh, London, from what I know, London was wor like working on some stuff with uh, Noah. And uh, London had reached out to me that uh, they wanted to form like a live band for um, what they were doing. And then uh, like a little side project thing. And then um, they started working with Nico. And then uh, I said, yeah, I'm in. And then we all got together and jammed and that's how it came together. But I think, uh, yeah, London or Nico. <laughs> could, uh... um, yeah, I've known like uh, Nico and Noah for most of my life and Ty I've known socially and off and on for the past few years. Um, just playing in bands and stuff and playing shows with them. Um, but yeah, I was working with Noah and we wanted to do something different. Um, we started working with Nico because I worked in another band with him and knew he'd... I, I didn't trust anyone else playing all the stuff, honestly. <laughs> um, and I... I I don't know, I thought it would be too selfish to not form something or a band or at least project. So I'm stoked with what we got now. Now, London and Nico, you guys were in the band Classless Act together. Is that still an active band? He was the first person I played music with, you know, um, and I think I was the first person that he played drums with. So, you know, we have a naturally a very like tight, you know, bond over with music and everything. So, you know, the Classless Act, we started Classless Act. And um, originally, actually, we wanted the lineup we have now for what is Classless Act now, which is still going, and I'm going to do a record with them soon and and everything. But, um, you know, it's it's kind of funny how that turned out because we would reach out. We reached out when we were 13 or 14 to Noah and to Ty, and Ty left us on red. <laughs> and, and Noah couldn't do it at the time so we're just like all right well we got to keep going so yeah. we formed that band and you know now it's just like I I miss my having my old friend you know we we have a good playing style together so I'm like all right like let's you know I just want to play as much music as I can so I got in touch with him and this this whole thing started so <laughs> you know cool it's just kind of been crazy ever since so obviously there's some well-known last names among you guys but I thought the cool thing was when you released that single, it got a really positive reaction. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, these are some kids of some famous musicians. Uh, the Facebook comments were really positive. It was really cool seeing that. And I wanted to know, like, basically your reaction to seeing the reaction to your first single. I think, like, to us, it doesn't phase us. I mean, we're used to it. It's been around us now. It's just we're fucking adults. We're all doing our own thing. Um, I think our music speaks for itself. That's one song that's been out. It's a fucking good song, and I'm stoked that everyone liked it. Um, but really excited for what everyone's going to hear next. It just blew my... I woke up to all of that. And I woke up to people from, like, extended family and my girlfriend's family sending me pictures of the Consequence of Sound interview <laughs> on Facebook saying, hey, we saw you. And I'm like, dude, what? how the hell did this happen so um you know obviously i'm not used to it you know um like having a lot of press coverage and stuff so i'm just like that's fucking awesome like it's crazy cool and can you talk about the song itself long awaited uh just musically how it came together and also your decision to put that out there as the first taste of music for the public to hear from suspect 208 yeah, that song was actually the piece of music was written a while ago by me and my dad because my dad's a musician and you know I, I like to write songs with him and everything and you know we have a good chemistry together with that so 
we wrote that piece of music and we're just like fuck like you know let's let's see what we can do with this and um you know i sent it to him and alien alert (laughs) (laughs) that fool put a really good melody on it and lyrics (laughs) and we're just like dude this is too good to not put out you know sorry (laughs) is that noah joining us (laughs) <laughs> we need to set the camp dude we need to set this up somewhere it's we're not all in the same room anymore okay sit down we're sitting Scoot over hey man hey spencer from consequence of sound how's it going good good thanks for joining yeah we were just talking about the reaction to your first single long awaited and i was saying that it's really cool that the response was overwhelmingly positive it's pretty awesome. I didn't expect to get big or anything really. So I didn't really know what to expect from it. I didn't think it was going to get hate. I didn't think anyone was going to super, I mean, like it as much as they did though. So, I mean, it's pretty awesome. None of us expect. I didn't expect it at all. Yeah. Like I, I mean, no one, I like max, like we expected like 10,000 streams maybe. Yeah. And uh, right now, it seems like you guys are doing a real DIY thing. Uh, just even setting up this interview, I went directly through you guys. No publicist, no record label, no management. And I wanted to know, you know, with a single blowing up, uh, you know, have there been offers coming in the last couple of weeks? Uh, and how are you guys dealing with that? Keeping our options open for sure. We're definitely like have been doing it ourselves. I mean, like that song we mixed, recorded everything, did it all ourselves at the house we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, obviously, working with some people would be cool, but trying to keep the creatives going and don't really want to keep it within the family. Keep yeah. It within the family. <laughs> yeah, I think with something like this, it's important that we get um, people that we trust and that are not gonna. You know, fuck us over and we're being really really selective because we know that like we're, we're not going to take the first offer that we get so that's kind of what we're looking at you know until the, until then until a really good offer comes or a really good person comes we're we're going to keep it you know just DIY and I think it's also interesting that you formed this band during a pandemic can you talk about that experience I mean it's kept me busy I can <laughs> say that and And that's why I'm grateful because in the beginning of the pandemic, I had all this extra time on my hands. So I was like, I'm kind of glad. I'm grateful that it's kept me busy throughout the pandemic and all. And Ty, you're 16, right? Are you still in school? I'm 16. I'm the younger guy. Uh, I'm still in school. I'm doing school and still, but yeah. And did the rest of you graduate? Yeah, I graduated uh, in 2019, so I'm 20 right now. Yeah. I just turned 20 uh, November 19th. I'm 18, I'm a senior. I'm in high school now, I'm about to finish. So you're balancing school, a band, and a pandemic all at once. And so much more. Yeah. <laughs> so much more. So much more. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to know like, what's next as far as new music, is there an EP? Is there an album? What's, um, what's the plan? New single and a video within the next couple weeks. Yeah. Yep. And um, live stream shows. And once the concert industry picks up again and once it's safe to tour again, do you guys see yourselves going out there and playing some live shows? We're ready to go. I mean, um, I think it's unique what we're doing now and like we could still make a name for ourselves and not even play a show it's mysterious but i just can't wait to get in front of a fucking audience again and especially with what we have now on a whole another level than anything what we're used to uh, because you're such a new band do you see yourself playing a full set of originals or do you see yourself working in some cover songs as well well i think that's actually what we're what we're waiting for kind of we're gonna you know, we have we have some songs that we we are playing all originals, but they're from different members of the bands, and you know what I mean. So, I think we're waiting to really like have like eighteen songs that we've all written that we are are all super fucking really good, and also like you know keep releasing singles. Like this next single that's coming out is gonna show a whole nother 
side of the band and um, going to build a completely different audience than the first one did, you know? And uh, so we're going to, we're going to milk it as much as we can. And in this time we're writing and writing and we're going to come playing shows like with a really fucking badass set. Cool. Cool. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's talk about some of your influences. We'll go one by one and we'll start with uh, London. Obviously your dad is slash, but you uh, decide to go ahead and uh, play drums. Can you talk about the decision to uh, pick up the drums as opposed to guitar and then some of your influences when it comes to drumming? Well, I show, well, I, I do play like a little bit of guitar and play bass, but drums is my main passion. Um, and I chose that, or I would say it, it really called me just because I didn't want to fucking live in my dad's shadow. Um, I, I don't think I can get better than him if I play guitar. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to. You know, I'm just trying to fucking do my own thing, have fun, and, you know, hopefully people gel with what I do, but um yeah playing drums to fucking i don't know if your dad could record a song like shark attack if i'm being honest <laughs> yeah. i don't think he can record shark attack those it's, too, chords. it's too simple <laughs> but as far as your drumming drumming influences is there anyone oh. you looked up to yeah um bonham Grohl, john theodore um Dave Elitch, Tommy Aldridge, I got Bonham tattooed right here, and then Animal, because I don't know if you can see that, but Animal is one of my favorite drummers, but I got him. Cool, cool, and I wanted to go with uh, Ty next. Uh, Ty, obviously your dad is Robert Trujillo in Metallica, and you did follow in his footsteps. You are playing bass, but if you want to talk about, you know, playing the instrument, your styles you like, and then some of the influences you have outside of your father. Some of my bass influences, other than my dad, of course, my dad, you know, <laughs> influence, obviously, he's playing bass all the time around the house, but, um, you know, Geezer Butler from Sabbath, um, you know, Cliff Burton from Metallica, of course, the original bassist, and um, let's see another influence, um, Jaco Pastorius, he's a good, he's a great jazz player, and, you know, I like, I love that style of bass playing, I love, like, all styles, you know, of course, Flea as well, and, uh, yeah, like just like different styles of bass. And I like to kind of like do kind of, I like to kind of like incorporate it all into kind of like what, I, what I'm playing and stuff like that. So kind of get it, get it from all different kind of bass players, even like pick bass playing, like playing with a pick. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that too. Like, you know, in the punk rock kind of style, how the, a lot of the bass players play, play with picks. Thanks, Ty. And uh, Noah, when the single was released, a lot of the comments were, wow, the singer sounds a lot like his dad. Obviously, your dad was Scott Weil, and then much respect to him. And uh, I wanted to know kind of, you know, your influences and, you know, your decision to pick up singing and, uh, you know, kind of following in your dad's footsteps. My, uh, well, obviously, I grew up more listening to whatever my parents were listening to when I was younger. So it was like... I mean, my dad was more into, like, obviously rock. My mom was a lot, well, she obviously was, too. She was also really into, like, uh, R&B and uh, hip-hop. And um, that kind of, I was kind of around that a lot at one certain point. So my musical uh, direction, I, well, not direction, uh, my music taste, I guess, just kind of were more, Throughout the years, it's more rap, honestly. So like, right, like even now, like I don't, honestly don't really listen to rock at all, or unless it's the shit that I play. Unless like, it's like something anyone else plays, like I don't. I listen to like, like Chris Brown and like Young Thug, Young Thug and yeah. stuff like that. The Weekend, and it's like, <clears throat> I mean, if you hear uh, my other kind of music, I mean, not a lot has really been put out. But I can kind of sing in like a bunch of different ways. Like that, that long awaited is kind of like really small one, like portion of my voice, I guess you could say. Like um, I used to, before, before all this, I was only doing R&B and rap. And then uh, I kind of just wanted to try more like rock style or kind of stuff, more just 
on a different, just try different things. And my first song that I made was one of the first ones that I put out in, a, in oh, with two others that I worked on with London and it was doing pretty good. Like people liked it a lot. So I kind of was like, no, this is more fun. I just, it just comes more natural, I guess you could say. So that's kind of how, I don't know. That's, I get a lot of my melodies from R&B and pop. Ooh. And I, that's how I know, that's how I put it into, and I think that's the beauty of it. It just makes it very unique. What he, what was put on along the way to fit the song, for sure. Mm -hmm. Finally, Nico, you're the guitarist in the band, and I just wanted to know, uh, you know, what led you to pick up guitar and some of the bands and artists who influenced you. Since I was since I was little, my me and my dad have always like uh, bonded over music, and he would we would, we would drive around and just he would show me like all this rock stuff, and like the first song that ever blew my mind was back in black on iron man one <laughs> when i watched that and i was like six years old i was like i couldn't stop thinking about that song so since then some kind of like seed was planted i feel like and you know i went back and forth trying to play guitar but i wasn't into it until later and you know my dad always played like acdc in the car and you know like just other led zeppelin and Jimi hendrix and Guns N' Roses and any band with a really good guitar player, you know, was was played. So I was always like, okay, you know, what? like just one day I just woke up. I'm like, I just, I have to play guitar. Like, that's what I want to do with my life, you know. So since then, you know, I've just been like expanding what I listen to. Lately, I've been getting even more into like, you know, Jeff Beck. And, um, you know, I, I got into all those fusion guitar players and everything too. And it's like, that's that's what really inspired me to play guitar though but originally it was just it was angus young it was the rock guys that just like blow your fucking face off <laughs> and here we are 40 years after uh back in black and acdc just put out another killer new album which is pretty yeah cool. <laughs> that uh those guys are still going strong like well into their 60s right yeah, yeah. it did really great i also wanted to ask you know having parents in the industry could kind of be a blessing and a curse on the one hand they can kind of help guide you along and give you advice on the other hand you know when uh, your parents are kind of these legendary musicians there's a lot to live up to and can leave a, little, a lot of pressure on you can you talk about both of those aspects uh you know both the pressure to follow in your dad's footsteps and then you know just the advice they've given you over the years i don't really feel any pressure honestly uh i don't even see I mean, music now is so different. It's like been so long since I guess like uh, what like my dad was doing, like obviously not to say it's not like legendary or nothing like that. Like for so long since like that's been like, uh, that was at the top of the game, I guess you could kind of say. So like, it's not like those, all those people. Like, it's not like the the younger generation, like, remembers that or anything like that. Or it's like, they don't know that. Like, the, yeah. like my, people my age, most people my age don't really, aren't aware of that, of older eras of music. Like, just being realistic. Yeah. Like, majority aren't. Like, may, they may know a little bit, but majority are not. So I'm not really worried about, like, me ever or me living in a shadow or anything like that because it's like it's only so long before people only know me for who i am you know what i mean i'm not even really worried about that at all oh yeah so it's like i mean the music i make is not like i mean maybe i guess uh, like a lot of people said i sound like my dad and a lot of people compared our songs to that but it's like that's that's such a small example out of the amount of uh, like of what we could do it's like it's it's if they're expecting like just straight that kind of like uh, vibe, it's not going to be like that at all. Like we're too we we do we we do too much and like too much different stuff to like ever be uh, tied like uh, you know like uh, back to get for that for us to get. I can't talk. Yeah, for, us to, can't for us to be tied down to one thing and just stay yeah, outside yeah. and put in a box. Another thing that I, I want to touch on to that, I think it's fucking great job. Um, we're like, 
no one's gonna fucking take our parents places like we're not gonna be able to fucking do that i'm not it's not fucking you know that's not my battle i don't i don't want that i'm trying to fucking i got too many other people to take over uh machine gun kelly um um, yeah i mean like what they did is fucking awesome it's gonna be there for all forever and you know so will we yeah we're just trying to fucking do something for the new generation inspire what happened in the fucking 80s and 90s with those bands with the new generation of fucking kids cool cool and the other part of the uh question was uh is there any advice that your dads have given you over the years that you you know you can share with us that you've kind of taken to heart i'd say one um piece of advice that i've received from my dad is always like always be productive on writing songs like always write new songs because the songs are the most important thing and that's what i always see as like the most important thing as when it comes down to as and being in a band, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely. Cool. And any of the other guys wanted to speak on that? Um, I just know that the music industry is dirty. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a snaky game. And uh, I'm just glad. Uh, if there is one thing that we will ever ask for help for, because we really have not asked for any help besides like people, like our friends and stuff like that and what we're doing, like for like, just like photography or just any other thing besides what we're doing as like four of us making music is just be like the fact that we do have people that know they could help us not get screwed over. Yeah. And we're obviously not just gonna oh, be selfish and not, and get screwed over because we just wanted to, you know, like be say we didn't, you know what I mean? There's no wrong. There's nothing wrong in asking for help. And like, for, if you're not, if you don't want to get screwed over, I guess. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, put in, put in better words, I guess. <laughs> fucking, I mean, yeah. Don't be afraid to fucking ask for help or yeah. band or brothers. I mean, we do most of the shit ourselves. Um, for me, it's as funny as it is. My dad has a phrase: "All things considered, I gotta consider all things." When <laughs> with fucking a lot of people out there right now you know, as a band we really we're considering everything so dad if you're watching this we're considering all things and finally one more for you guys uh, where do you guys see yourselves in 10 years if the world is still a thing i will uh we'll probably it'll be something like my life will probably be more healthy McDonald's. No more. Yeah, I think it would be like a, a really like good like dad band. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we we might get we might get a little fat. We might you know just start sticking a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it. 